Hey folks, so in this video, let's say you bought the new i9-12900 and plan on using the stock CPU cooler. So I've got Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility up. I've got Hardware Info 64 up. And we're, uh, we're going to look at power limit throttling and thermal limit throttling because you potentially will experience both of these with this CPU. Now, we'll talk about uh, solving those issues here as well. Let's run this uh, benchmark that's built into Intel, Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility. That's where I'm gonna go here. I guess before we do that, your default power limit settings, PL1 is around 65. And honestly, I can't remember exactly what this one was, but it's somewhere around 202, all right? So we're gonna run this benchmark. Once again, i9-12900 with the stock CPU cooler. We should see temperatures go up into the 90s and we should also experience power limit throttling. Just so happens in this case, folks, we have experienced both power limit throttling and thermal limit throttling, not such a great thing. Now, I can get rid of one of these issues easy enough. The other we'll talk about. So let's try and get rid of power limit throttling. And what we're gonna do to do that is we're gonna increase our power limits. Now you could play around with these somewhat, or you can just take PL1 and go all the way to the out and that will change PL2, hit apply. Now what I wanna do is clear these out for y'all before we run this again. Do that over here. So we see nothing but no's over here. And let me give this CPU a little bit longer to hopefully cool off. Now I do have in the BIOS, I've got the CPU fan set to the highest setting. Which at about 12 inches away, I believe was about 51, 52 decibels. Uh, honestly, I can't hear it over the graphics card. So, all right, it's cooled off. Let's run this again. We should see a higher benchmark score Now keep an eye over to the right, folks. You see thermal throttling all over the place. What you don't see this time, though, is power limit throttling. So we did get rid of one issue. Now there are probably other things you might be able to do to get those temperatures down. But honestly, the easiest thing, in my opinion, um, is going to be to switch out the CPU cooler to maximize my performance. So at some point, if I wanna get rid of this thermal throttling, folks, I'm going to replace this with a Noctua CPU cooler or some other LGA 1700 that has a higher TDP. Now just going from 65 to 90 watt TDP, whatever, is not really gonna help the situation. You're gonna to need to find one that is probably well over 200 watts rated TDP for the fan, CPU fan cooler. Um, I will most likely take two steps here. One, I'm going to show you the cheapest LGA 1700 CPU cooler out in another video. We'll install that. We'll see what kind of temperatures we get there. Then it's going to go to the Noctua 140 millimeter either a single tower or dual tower. I haven't figured out which one I want to use. I have the dual tower dual fan hooked up to a 5800X, so I'm not sure I want to take that one, but uh, we may just go a little above and beyond. So my opinion, this CPU probably needs at least a $50 
CPU cooler. That would be the cheapest Noctua. Will the $20 one that I bought do the trick? That remains to be seen. And of course, you can, an alternative to the CPU cooler is to come in here, if this allows it, um, you may have to do some of these things in the BIOS, but there are adjustments that you could potentially do inside of your BIOS that may help with this temperature situation. I'm not personally going to get into that in this video. Uh, I just wanted to really talk about using the stock cooler and the issues that you're going to experience, which would be power limit throttling, thermal limit throttling. We can solve one problem easy enough, get rid of the power limit throttling, which you saw, but the temperature limit throttling is another story with the CPU if you want to maintain the highest level of performance. All right. Thanks for checking out the video. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you.